Hey guys, and welcome back. This is Chosen Architect. Today, we're jumping back into some more FTB skies. And boy, oh boy, we're diving deep into Batania. Hopefully, you guys are ready. So today is the big day that we get started with Batania. And, uh, well, we already have a miniature Batania setup that we set up a few episodes ago. But today is really going to be the big day where all of this is going to be rocketing forward. Now... Uh, keep in mind, this is going to uh, fly pretty fast uh, as the main topics I want to go over is going to be uh, the automation systems that I want to set up. So the main part of Batania is going to be pretty straightforward. Now, judging by the flower on top of my head, I'm pretty well versed in the world that is the Batania mod. Now, I tell you what, this looks way more fitting. Uh, so let's dive headfirst into Batania now that I've already generated this. Um, let's, uh, let's just jump right in and, uh, start with the automation here. So this automation allows us to take the Batania petals, um, and, uh, convert them. So you can see these, this is a mystical petal. Uh, all we have to do is place the petal down and then provide this with a breaker upgrade, breaker module. And so if you put that on the front and, uh, we put it into our modular router, this is going to break the flower because Batania has now changed how the actual petal duplication system works. Normally you'd have to use a shear, but in this case, you do not. Um, so we put uh, the bone miller dispenser on one tick off, and then we grab some redstone. And let's go ahead and set up the very simple, uh, basically petal duplicator. Um, and uh, right here, this is the observer is going to see that we place this petal. This would actually place more petals. I'll demonstrate here in a moment. Um, and then this, we also need, if you remember, we're going to need that security upgrade. Um, so let's go to modular routers. I keep forgetting. We're going to have to, uh, either change the setting full on out or just use the security augment. Uh, for right now, I'll just put the security in there and then that should break it. You can see, and it drops right here. So we can convert this since we took one pedal and now this turns into four. And so when we put three in here, this could also be used by the way, uh, to automate. You would just have to make sure you provide bone mill and then you also provide this and then you need something to place. But for right now, we should be able to get away with doing it by hand because you don't need too many after a while. As you can see right there, it is going to just continue to break. It is pretty darn quick as well. So with the petals automated and started to get produced, uh, let's talk about automating the petal apothecary. So it is very, very simple to do this. So all you need, as you can see, I had that already placed down. It's just a sink. And then you can use a modular router connected to the sink in a single block, just some sort of water source. You can use an infinite, uh, infinite water source even if you wanted to, so long as the side attached was the, uh, the source block. But what we're gonna do is we are gonna take two activator modules and we are going to automate this pretty quick. Uh, so we want one to activate on the top and this one is going to click a bucket full of water. And then this right here is going to click from the back because this right here is the front. So this would be the back of the machine. And uh, it is going to click, but it is going to just simply right click an empty bucket to fill. And then we wanna set this to whitelist so that way it whitelist the bucket. Um, and then for this one, we want a full bucket. So let's go ahead and get a full bucket and we can specify that in the filter. These are all filter slots. And so if we put these in right here, we can have place water uh, and then this. It's going to basically loop through these modules that are going right here. Uh, and uh, if I put this in and I put my pedal on top, it's going to right click this water bucket onto here once we put a security upgrade in. And you can see it just grabbed that. And now there's a water bucket back in here that's full because it's going to leave that water bucket in and use it as its actual tool. And so it just basically filled it. And then once this empties, it'll fill this again, and then it'll pick up the water and keep doing that over and over again. It's a pretty simple way to automate your Britannia, your petal apothecary. Now, to really get jump started with this um, and, and to actually show how this is going to function, uh, we can go ahead and toss this in. So two brown, a light gray, and a red will make an endo flame whenever we give it a seat, right? And as you can see, it filled back up. Now, what we can do is we can just dump these seeds on top and uh, it's not going to put the seeds in, right? We just have it on top. And we can click with the right hand now to fill this in. And you can see every time that fills in, it's going to allow us to just simply 
keep putting the recipe in over and over again. And we can produce a lot of endo flames this way. Um, and this is super handy, super handy because we're gonna need a lot of these for our basic, basic automation. Now, I know that we're going on a train of automation, but I really wanna show all the cool things that you can actually do that will really jumpstart you with Batani, even before you get, get started with major amounts of uh, mana. So I have my floating pure daisy right here. We actually got this as a reward via our quests, uh, but you can craft these very simple, uh, very simply. Uh, but we're gonna be using constructors and deconstructors. So at first, let's go ahead and place down some constructors and it may seem a little weird to have them placed like this, uh, but we're gonna be rotating them all. So you just simply use your wrench to right click. It makes it way easier than some of the other methods that are out there. Um, and then we're gonna take some stone um, now, I don't have stone automated, uh, kind of. I do have it automated, but it's just not hooked in. Uh, but that's going to be fine. We, we have a method of getting plenty of stone. So what I'll do is uh, right here, we, we just need to tell it what to construct. And right now, it's going to be stone. And so I'm going to say place stone in an L pattern like this. And I've done this many times in the past. Um, and then on the other side, we're going to do log. So we'll get both of the materials that get converted via a floating pure daisy automated. And you can do this with all of the different uh, ingredients that the pure daisy can do. Now on the top, we'll have deconstructors. Now these don't work without defining what they're gonna be deconstructing. So uh, we need to get those ingredients and then we'll be ready to up and roll, right? Uh, oh wait, they do actually break on their own. Oh. Well, well, that's unfortunate. Um, so what we need to do instead is we need to go ahead and define in here what they're actually going to be breaking. And that's living logs and a living rock. So living log and living rock are going to be the things. So this side will be specifically living logs and this gets this all automated. It is very quick and easy and uh, is a great way to get a living rock and living, uh, living wood automated. Like this is, I mean, I, I know I'm saying automation a lot, but it is very simple. And then, then just get it hooked in and you have this flowing into your system to use for our future setups that we're about to get started with. By the way, make sure to put this in whitelist mode. I guess you could have just blacklisted the actual item that's in here, uh, but uh, I decided to put what its actual product would be. Now, if you really want to kickstart your production by this point, you probably have a time in the bottle. And well, yeah, this actually works. <laughs> As you can see, this will jumpstart the production and get this going quite fast. Now I am going to be using the good old tried and true Indo flames at first to get us a bit of mana, but I actually want to set up uh, another option uh, that is going to be very, very fast and very, very useful, uh, which is going to allow us to have RF flowing into, into our flowers to produce mana. Because there is a there's a mod in here that uh, is called botan botanical uh, additions, which is like sort of back here, and it adds a lot of like later game stuff. Uh, and one of them is this right here. It does require uh, runes, which we're going to set up rune automation here in just a moment. Uh, but yeah, so it's a petal apothecary recipe requiring this rune. So we will want to get these runes set up, but uh, we'll be able to produce this flower that utilizes uh, power. <laughs> right? And I did some testing and it seems like it uses about 20, 20 or so RF per tick uh, to run. So you can set up multiples of them and it'll produce mana at a pretty significant rate for you. Uh, but first, Indo Flames are a tried and true alternative or, or, or tried and true just way of doing it at first. So I want to set this up and show you one of the simplest ways to do so. Now I am using these deep slate uh, petal apothecaries. You don't have to use apothecaries, but I like the way they look when I place them on there. Um, and uh, this gives them sort of a platform instead of just having these mana spreaders just all over the place. It is a great way of setting these up. Of course, we're going to need our wand. Uh, we're actually probably going to need multiple wands. Uh, I'm pretty sure with Batania, I do have my wand, I think, in my backpack uh, right here. Uh, so we do need to link these. And uh, right here is a mana splitter. This is going to split into these different mana pools, uh, allowing us to get more bang for our buck and have a bit more storage right off the bat. Of course, sparks are the ultimate way to store mana and get it moving around, but uh, for right now, this will do. Now, one of the downsides of this shader that we're actually using, and just shaders in general at the moment, is the mana doesn't actually display inside of the mana pools, even though the mana is there. So if you're wondering why it doesn't look like mana is generating, 
it's because of that reason. Now, if you happen to know of a fix or a way to fix that, let me know down in the comments below, because I would love to know, because I would love to be able to actually see the mana in the pools. So let's set this bad boy up. So on the bottom, we're going to actually be using refined storage exporters. And let me go ahead and eat this chorus fruit. We have ourselves some modular routers placed here, and we need to send coal to the modular routers. Um, so simply just apply an exporter to the bottom of these, and then we're going to define what goes into them. And inside of these is going to be coal for right now. Uh, later on down the road, we could, I guess, use logs to generate charcoal. That'd be a pretty simple way of doing things as well. Um, but once we get these hooked in, let me go ahead and make sure we eat another one. This only lasts a minute. It just gives you enough time to really get going here. Uh, let's make a few more cables. So with this all hooked together, that'll start putting this in. Now, these can be redstone controlled, uh, the modular routers. And so <laughs> I'm so glad they added this mod because it is fantastic. So what I want to do is I want to place a pressure plate on here to control what we're going to be putting in here, the module that we're going to be putting in here, which is going to be basically a dropper module. Now, uh, to get the item to shut the machine off, right, when, we, when, when an item's on here, it will rest here. What I want it to do is I want it to stay there, and I want it to activate when there's something off of the pressure plate, when nothing's on the pressure plate. So when something's on the pressure plate, we want this to shut down. Um, and so all we have to do is set that to redstone low mode. When something's on there, it'll stop working. So let's get this set up. So here are the dropper modules, and I can configure all of them. We want them to all to go up top. Uh, and there's no specific uh, filter we need to set this time, but we do want them going up. So if I place this, you're going to see it's going to put a piece of coal up there. Uh, and this is all well and fine, but there is a little bit of a problem, right? Um, I don't think one is enough to provide 12 endo flames that we're going to have uh, that this is going to be working with. So to increase the number that it puts out each time, simply put a single stack upgrade in here, and this will double. And so now we should get two that pop up. And you can see there are two sitting here, and that is more than enough to keep up with the endoflames. Now it's time to hook in the power source, and that is going to be endoflames, and six per spreader. Six per spreader is what I typically go with. You can arrange this in a multitude of ways, as it will reach, but this will work right here. Uh, once I get all these plugged in, this should start to produce a significant amount of mana, uh, and we'll just generate over time. And yeah, with eight spreaders running, doing this whole job, yeah, well, these pools are going to fill up in no time. And uh, if we take a look at our wand, you can see we're already getting a little bit of mana built up already. And that is spreading out between all of the pools. In my hand is a runic altar. There's a couple things that I want to automate, and that is one of them, the runic altar. And it may be a little daunting to think about how to automate this, but I, I can promise you it's a little bit simpler than you might think. So over here, we're going to have a mana spreader that shoots a mana bolt right over here and is going to lead to where we have this placed, the runic altar. Now, right next to it, we're going to have our crafter. And uh, this is going to sort of uh, the way we're going to set this up is by making sure it when it receives a redstone pulse that it is going to send one single amount of craft. Of course, on its first go, uh, as soon as you do the request, it'll send the first batch of items. Uh, for the pattern, but after that point, it'll wait until it receives a redstone signal, a redstone pulse, and then it will send the craft again. So that's perfect, because the Runic Altar has the ability, when it is active, to send a redstone signal of one when it is initially activated, and a redstone signal of two when it is ready to be finished. Um, and so we can utilize that redstone in a very interesting way. Uh, one, we can use it to say, okay, well, when this is finished, send a redstone signal. Uh, but over here, we can auto, we can say, all right, well, we need this activated. So we can use a wand inside of the dispenser, or you can have it, uh, you can use modular routers if you absolutely want to. It's just very easy to use this, for example, a dispenser, and then use yourself a wand. This is why I'm going to have to craft another one. Um, so when this is ready, we can do it this way, right? This is like a very known method of, uh, of setting up automation and taking some redstone and applying this in the back, right? So this is this is very common, right? Um, and this works, this works great. Uh, and then what you would have is a barrel and then a pipe leading to the top and then you'd have yourself an open crate uh, that would go a couple blocks above this. But what I want is actually to have the open crate stay right here, right on top of it, very, very compact. 
Um, and then I want to utilize a modular router right here for the collection. So I can use a vacuum module in here for that. However, I am going to have to define specifically what I want this vacuum module to pull, pick up, which is going to be the runes that we're going to be setting up AutoCraft for. Um, so within Batania, and as far as the runes go, oh, actually, sorry, modular routers, uh, we need to make um, some filters. So there are these things called bulk item filters, which are beautiful, by the way. They're basically large filters. Uh, let's go ahead and get the bulk item filter set up, and we are going to be taking a look at runes. All of the different runes that we can make from Batania, and I've got to get them all added to this bulk item filter. Now, with all of them added, all we have to do now is go into our vacuum module, and we'll put it in here and make sure we specify whitelist mode. Uh, and then I also want to specify front being the fa this direction to be the sort of direction where it's going to start pulling things from. Um, and then we just set that in there. So uh, any rune that gets generated will automatically get picked up and nothing else will. Uh, and this is kind of cool. Now the, the rune will kind of like splash around inside these blocks because it will be inside of a block space, but uh, that's not a huge deal. Now this does need an inventory. You can try and hopper, but I don't think it'll recognize if it doesn't have enough slots for the amount of items that we're gonna be programming into it, uh, it will not input into that inventory. Now on the top, I'm just going to use um, some sort of transporter. Uh, actually for this, let's upgrade this to the ultimate and we'll use ultimate pipes on top. Oh, if I place the right pipes down and we'll just be transferring the items into the open crate. And that's how this setup is going to work. Now here's a bonus tip when setting up your automation for this. Um, you are going to need living rock uh, and the cool thing about Living Rock is when it's placed on top of that altar, it doesn't actually go into the altar. So this is the reason why we're automating in this way. Um, the Living Rock actually will just set there. So even if it was put first, it, it still won't go into the altar. It's one of the few items that actually won't get consumed or go into the inventory of the Runic Altar. So uh, we can use that in an interesting way. We can go ahead and define the recipe here that makes the runes, but also include a Living Rock. So... Uh, it will drop a living rock and that's all we have to do for the automation is set this up and now we have our pattern that should work. Uh, now, uh, of course we need to auto craft fishing rods and get an auto craft thing going. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a bunch of crafters inside of our little pocket dimension here. The same place that we have our automation for mechanism. So after doing some testing, I decided to put the modular router down here. It also allows me to hide this a little bit better. And uh, so I do have the rune in here, and then in the, the vacuum upgrade, I just set the uh, the top as where it's picking from. Let's finish this up and get this. I need to just put an importer on the bottom here, and then this will be ready to go. That will pull the items out of the buffer slot. So I just wanted to throw this in here to the automation because it is integral to being able to craft uh, other runes that require multiple runes right here. Because we have a filter set up uh, in our modular router that actually consumes said runes, right? Uh, and picks them up. Well, we need to make sure it doesn't pick them up when they're being dis dropped right here. Uh, so to do that, I have a pulse extender from create set to one second. And I'm using a redstone link. You can place an item right here. And then underneath, uh, to have this set up appropriately, um, I have that redstone link hooked to here. And now you do have to right click the wrench uh, to put it into receive mode uh, on side that redstone link. Now, right here on the modular router, you need it set to redstone mode high so that way it is off until it uh, receives a redstone signal. And then while it receives a redstone signal, um, it will then work. Now, you definitely want to put a stack upgrade, speed upgrades inside here. And then also make sure you put speed upgrades in your importer. Uh, otherwise you may end encounter some issues, but it seems like with this settings, with the settings I'm using right here, it is, uh, working flawlessly and that is perfect. Now the solution to this is really simple. So we have a crafter with an upper, uh, in this particular pack that's feeding into an open crate. And so, uh, it will send the items one at a time in here and then this will pick them up, which is the modular router. Same exact setup, except I have the items filtered in here, making sure it's set to whitelist and then having it going up. Um, so all the items that will go into the buffer, which will be the final resulting product, uh, which will get picked up in this radius, that'll simply uh, just go right back into the system, thus completing our auto crafts. So now I have a lot of work ahead of me. I've got to get um, all of this mana transferred over. Like later on, we'll be able to use sparks for this. 
right now I still have to use mana spreaders. Uh, but yeah, I've got a whole lot of auto crafting configuration to set up. Now I've got almost everything all crafted up and all the patterns ready to go. Now in here, I have set up some of the crafters for refined storage uh, to have like an area where we keep everything going. Now I don't have to come here over and over again. That's the good part. We can keep the crafters in another dimension and we can actually set up ourselves a crafting manager to manage all of our auto crafts. Uh, so we should be able to see all of the different crafters uh, listed here. So you can see we have tons of space. So now these are all of our crafters now combined. So instead of having like a, a multi-block that you access, you place all of them down and then you can access all of them via the manager. Um, and that's going to be super helpful, right? Because we have a couple of these that need to go in. And so now anytime we want to add recipes, we can make them and then place them right here. So now let's see this beauty in action. Let's see if we can't get ourselves, for example, like a mana diamond or a mana pearl. Let's do a ma let's do like uh, four or five mana pearls. And there it goes. And it picks them up. Perfect. That's exactly what we want to happen. Now I've made my agglomeration plate, which just required my runes. And uh, all we're going to do now is put some sparks in. However, sparks with shaders are a scary thing. They don't appear, and the only way to see them is with uh, our jade that is above in the top of the screen. Uh, now, to get rid of a spark, you have to locate it and then shift right click to break it. Uh, but these normally render if you're not using shaders. It's just weird that they, they don't show up. Now, surprisingly enough, from our adventures, we have Terrastill nuggets, and this is actually enough to make Terrastill. <laughs> um, surprisingly enough. Now, to make Terrastill on our own, there's two different methods. Of course, later on, we're going to make this method, which allows us to make this way cheaper. Uh, you can see the amount of mana required. It's actually half a mana pool. This is showing the diluted mana pool, whereas this, I believe, is showing a regular mana pool. Um, and normally, this uses half of a mana pool. So um, all we need is the mana still, pearl, and diamond, and we just apply that. And we're good to make this. And to automate this would be the same way. We would just have an open crate and then uh, very similar to this, actually, um, and just have it pop to the bottom. Uh, but we can just right click on here for right now and get that crafted up. And uh, because it's hooked to a spark, you can see we can see the transitions between the spark. Even right clicking the spark, we're able to see the line of what it's connected to. But for some reason, they just don't render themselves. But here we go. That should be the final nail in the coffin and we will have ourself Terra still. Now, the reason I'm getting into this whole section, right, is because to be able to finish this whole thing, well, we're going to need a bunch of Terra still. And this line right here is actually really, really good. We get creative element containers for elemental craft, and this will help us in all of our other elemental craft recipes uh, or uh, challenges that are in this pack. So here we go. We have ourselves some more Terra still. Now I'm going to put this to good use and I'm going to get myself the Gaia portal set up. I almost forgot to mention another reason why we're getting in Batania as well. Uh, this is one of the ways to get to the end and I definitely want to go explore the end. Now the way you set this up has been sort of changed. We have an Elven Gateway core. These are the living logs now. And then of course in the corner, I kind of like to use the stairs. And so in the corners, you can put the stairs. These are not required though. And of course the book, the Batania book will tell you how to do all of this. So we'll put our living uh, or glimmering living one there, living just like that. Of course, another stair. And then the logs go like this. It actually turns out to be a pretty cool looking structure once all said and done. And then right here, logs facing in that direction. And the portal is pretty much ready to go. Only thing left to do is, uh, well, we can go ahead and place a couple of logs right here because what we're going to do is place mana pools right here and apply our pylons. Now, I know I'm just hating on these shaders because as of right now, the compatibility for this newer version is, is meh. But uh, yeah, these pylons, they don't display the way they should. <laughs> so just assume there's a green glowy bit inside there. And uh, I'll, I'll just assume with you and uh, we both, uh, we, we know what they look like. We've seen them for years. Now, as far as how full these want to be, you want at least uh, a quarter of a mana pool filled up in this. Uh, so to do that, I'm just using, uh, to, to, to get it done quickly, uh, I'm just using a mana tablet. Get that mana tablet up there if you can. Probably toss it right here. 
Um, and uh, yeah, you definitely want to get it to at least one fourth before you click this gateway core to open the portal. So at this point, it's time to say hello to the elven gods and open our portal. And so what it will do is it pulls the mana from the mana pools and uh, you need a certain amount to get it open. These will start to flash as you can see. And now we have a portal nice and open and uh, we're ready to use this portal. Now, what we can do is, uh, well, we can't stand in it, right? Well, we can stand in it, but it's not going to take us anywhere. This is a portal more or less to send items back and forth. And so I'm going to do the first task, and that is to send the Batania book through. Um, that is like one of the main parts, and that is called the, the Lexica Batania, right? Lexica Batania. So let's take this. Of course, we have it right here and toss it in. And that is going to give us some expertise and knowledge and knowledge of the new dimension, such as Alphamancy and all the stuff for summoning the boss and fighting him. This also gives us access to one of my favorite armors. And here it is. And here we go. There we go. This is one of my favorite sets of armor. I know. I, I, I don't know why, but I just, I love it. Little fairy spawn when you get hit. It's just, it's it's good looking. It's good looking. Now, of course, I, I do really like the next tier of armor, which is a Terra Still armor. Now that we have all of that done, and we have now communed with the Elven Gods or Elven Dimension, um, we have a lot more stuff to kind of work through, but to actually go to the end, it's not going to be too difficult, right? Uh, to go to the end, we kind of need, if it tells us here in our book, um, so I think it tells us when we go here, right? Ah, no, it tells us right here. Yeah, yeah it tells us right here uh, going to the end. So we need to uh, create an in portal or create the in portal frames. Now to create the in portal frames, well, let's see. What does it require? Oh, it requires a Gaia spirit. So if you know how many we need, it's going to be like to make a normal in portal frame. Um, we are actually going to need uh, nine of them, I believe. Yeah, three, six, no, 12, uh, three, six, nine, 12. Yeah, we're gonna need 12 in portal frames. Now, thankfully we do get given a couple of Gaia spirits. So as far as the fight goes, we're not gonna have to do it too many times. So now after making some runes, and getting this all crafted up as you just seen, you guys who have made it to the end of the video get to see this really cool thing in action. So right here we have this inner Jazia, <laughs> inner Jizera, uh, something like that. Uh, but the cool thing is, is this can actually pull from cables and can pull from batteries. Doesn't really matter, uh, but we can hook up a mana spreader right here. Go ahead and break this. And what I can do is place all of these in the back, right? And now let's give it an energy source to pull from. So how about right up top here, we just place down a single cable and we can put a plug on it and just make sure it's hooked to main. And you'll see dashes of sort of light sort of flash through this. And then we can link it here to here. And this is going to send mana incredibly fast to this. You can see right there, it is sending a good amount of mana. It is also using a pretty decent amount of RF, right? Remember 20 RF per tick each. Roughly, that was my estimate. I could be wrong there. It's really hard to determine in game. And it also doesn't say inside of the uh, Batania book. So that is a thing. Now, I think this is the perfect place to have this for little setups like this. Or if there's a place that you need mana and you want constant mana generation to it, just simply put this here. It is a very compact setup. Now I know I have hardly gotten into any of the fun parts of Batania outside of the automation, but honestly, that's what today was all about, was getting these things set up and automated as best we could, so that way it makes making those fun things a little bit easier to do and less tedium. Um, now, next episode, we're definitely gonna be fighting the Gaia Guardian and we're gonna be going and fighting the Ender Dragon. That's all gonna be super fun. And we're gonna be diving into some even cooler mods. So I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Of course, click that subscribe button if you did. Uh, if you haven't clicked it already, give this video a huge thumbs up. And well, it's time to thank the beautiful supporters of today's video. And that fantastic thanks is going to go to Kenneth Fuller. Thank you so much for your amazing support, by the way, and becoming a YouTube premium member 
uh, and supporting in that way. Of course, you can check that out. All you have to do is uh, click the little button that is next to the uh, the subscribe button, which is called the join button. And uh, that is one of the best ways as of right now of supporting me. Of course, alongside Discord and Patreon, those are all linked down in the description below if you're interested in that. I just love to say thanks to you guys as you guys make this all possible, even when views are down and all that fun jazz. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Of course, I'll see you in the next episode and hopefully it'll be nice and fun filled. And as always, thanks for watching. Huh, I wonder I wonder what this thing does. Oh, huh, okay, I'm, I'm definitely with that.